I know that I am not your time, boy. The following program may contain mature subject matter. Viewer discretion is advised. everyone. Thank you so much. This is so exciting. Welcome to the 2022 Juno Songwriter Circle at Massey Hall in Toronto. I'm very excited to be here. And my, my papers are so excited that they're already flying off the table. Okay, so it's wonderful to be here. Uh, as you know, Massey Hall has been closed down for two years for renovations, and it's emerged looking absolutely gorgeous. It's emerged from these two years looking better than ever. As for the rest of us, we made it out of the house. We made it out of our sweatpants. We're here. Uh, <laughs> my name's Talia Schlanger, and uh, I'm so happy to be here, although I am bummed for my friend Tom Power, who I know loves this event and loves hosting it, and we love him. Um, but rest assured, he is on the mend right now, and uh, I think he's watching at home on the live stream, no doubt wearing his absolute finest jean jacket. <laughs> Truly the most formal one that he has. Okay, so the 2022 Juno Songwriter Circle is presented by SoCan and Factor in association with Music Publishers Canada. Their support makes nights like this happen and we're so grateful to them. Uh, I want to take a moment to acknowledge that we are on the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples. This is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis people. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13, signed with the Mississaugas of the Credit, and the Williams Treaties signed with multiple Mississaugas and Chippewa bands. And if we can all just take one deep breath of acknowledgement together now. Okay. So I think it's safe to say that in the last couple of years, a lot of us have been hanging on by a thread. Maybe it's just me. Um, but I've noticed people around me are getting more comfortable with their own vulnerability and with being honest about how hard life can be sometimes. And songwriters, musicians, people who take the ineffable part of the human experience and turn it into music for the rest of us are kind of professionals at that honesty and vulnerability. They make a life out of it. And so it's extra meaningful, I think, tonight and at this time to be celebrating songwriters for what they do for us. So I am truly honored at this Juno Songwriter Circle to welcome not only some of the most exciting songwriters we have in Canada, but some of the most exciting songwriters, period, worldwide, worldwide right? Can we agree on that? Yeah, I'd say so. Okay. If you've ever been to one of these before, or if you've seen it on a live stream, you know you're in for a treat. You are gonna hear stripped down versions of songs. You're gonna hear about the inspiration behind them. Let's get to it, okay? Here we go. All right. They are up for Adult Alternative Album of the Year Juno Award from the wildly creative band Half Moon Run. Please welcome Devin Portilla and Connor Melander. Hi, welcome. Come on in, all right. And a staple of Canadian music, and get this, six-time Juno Award winner, Serena Ryder. All right, welcome, Serena. And one of this city's finest rappers and singers and lyricists, Juno Award winner, Toby. Hey, welcome. Have a seat. And up for two Junos this year, the poet, multi-instrumentalist, and singer-songwriter, Allison Russell. Uh, 
Hello. Wow. This is already so beautiful to look at. What an inspiring stage to look out at. I'm kind of a bit blown away by it already. Um, so welcome, everybody. Serena, I know that you played here at Massey Hall just recently. Um, yeah. What was that like? It was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had so much fun. It was the first time that I had played here since uh, the renovations, and it was such a magical evening. Yeah. I think Nick Cave had played the night before, and there was some, still some like Nick Cave energy around the stage. I was just like... <gasps> It was, it was amazing. It was so much fun. The cave effect. Now, who's, who's up here playing here for the, for the first time at Massey? Yes, yes. Oh, my gosh. Allison and Toby, welcome. I know, like, Allison, you've spent a bunch of time living, living in the States, but you're here back home. How does it feel to be up on this stage and to be home? It's really, really joyful Good. and also surreal, and I'm so just honored to be up here with all these towering artists and with you and with all of you. So <laughs> thanks for having me. Yay! Well, we are thrilled to have you, and I think we should get to some music right off the top, right? Here we go. We're going to start with Devin and Connor from Half Moon Run. What are you guys going to play for us first? It's called Grow Into Love. Yeah. Do you want to tell us a little bit about, about the song before you play it? Um, what do you think? Should we hear it first? I, I, remember, I remember when I, we all have our own origin stories for all the songs, so I'm sure whatever I say, Dev will maybe disagree with how it actually happened. But I remember one day we came to the jam space, we were supposed to be working on something else, and you were supposed to work on some lyrics for something else. And you came and you said, yeah, I didn't do it, I, I, uh, I, but I, cause I got really into this other tune. And this was the other tune. <laughs> it's Here one great thing, uh, songwriting is, always comes best when you have something that you should do. <laughs> that Even is if not it's another that. song, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's do it. <clears throat> Yes, I know what it means To have six years behind us and waiting Not but a shadow remains Where you took what was left worth taking This is only begun I do not know if I could just Grow into love with you Instead, I'm at peace with staying. Are we both come and go as we please? Well, I guess that's the game that we're playing. This is only of your two voices is like from, from the heavens. That's something else. That's <laughs> really you. beautiful. Half Moon Run, Devin and Connor. Thank you so much. All right, Serena Ryder. Oh, hi. 
Oh, hi. It's good to see you. See, we don't know who's going to be next up here. So <laughs> Wild card roulette, really? Ooh, you ready? That was beautiful. Holy Isn't cow. it? Thank you. It's so yeah. gorgeous. Okay, so Serena, you're going to play us music from your latest album today called The Art of Falling Apart, which is something I think we've all become very good at over Are we getting good at it yet? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and, and I understand that the whole record came out of a speech that you wrote actually before the pandemic. That's right, yeah. So, so I wrote um, a keynote speech um, on my mental wellness journey, and it was the first time that I decided to talk about details of what I had been through over the last 20 years of my life of touring and, and you know, anxiety, depression, and lots of different diagnoses and lots of different undiagnoses and trying to figure out you know, just how to trust myself and find some peace in myself. And I felt that it was really important to talk about. And then I had just finished writing the keynote speech. And then I had some dates booked to write a record. And I was like, well, I'm just going to keep on talking about this. So I wrote the keynote speech into the album. Yeah. So yeah, we can applaud for that for sure. I. I want to know, so you, you know, you write a speech like that in privacy, you have dates booked at a mm. studio in privacy, and, and you pour all of this emotion into it, and then at some point it's going to be released and the rest of us are going to hear it. Uh, were you dead terrified to, to put out that part of yourself and to share it with the rest of us? By the time it turned into music, I almost feel like, well, that's the thing about music, right? It turns everything into medicine. It just does turns the most painful things into the most healing things. And for me, writing that record was for me, to turn that into medicine for me. And it's really changed how I feel about myself and has given me the things that I needed. So yeah, felt really good. And I think given... <laughs> yeah. You've given a gift to the rest of us too with, with that medicine. Um, What's the, what's the first song that you're going to play for us? This is one of the, the, the last songs that I wrote on, on the record. Um, and I haven't played it in this key before, so I might screw it up, but that's OK. <clears throat> We're all friendly people here. <laughs> oh, yeah, see? I just don't know where the dots are on this one. This song is um, really about how the um, <clears throat> kind of the nature on the outside of us, like actual mother nature, is uh, so wise, and um, how really seeing our inner nature like mother nature, like if we're going through a winter, to allow it to happen, there's a lot of healing that can happen in winter time, and there's a lot of green grass growing underneath blankets of snow. Um, that's kind of what this one's about. Enjoy. 
just like I heard somewhere when we come here we only get what we pay for but if our deficit's clear so I guess there's never any violence stage and see if you guys will sing this part with me. Love is in the air, just breathe it. And you guys too, please. Love is in the air, just breathe it. Love is in the air, breathe out, breathe it, breathe out. Just breathe it. Love is in the air, just breathe it. Love is in the air, breathe out, breathe it, breathe out. Will you sing with us? Love is in the air, yeah. Just breathe it. Love is in the air. that Toby sort of got the last line, last line in there. Hey, listen, you threw me the alley-oop, I had to throw it down, so. That was, that was gorgeous, that was gorgeous. And it's a perfect warm-up, because we're gonna go to you next, okay? Oh, wow. okay? Okay, okay, good. Thank you, Serena. Yeah, so beautiful. <laughs> Thank you for singing, Toby. Such a good <laughs> feeling to be in a room to sing together with people, right? She's, yes, yes, yes. yeah. So, Toby, you brought a brand new song that's not even out yet for us. Uh, what can you tell us about it? Yeah, so this song is called Flowers. Um, I wrote it when I was in Los Angeles about a year ago. Um, I, was, I was going out and uh, I heard, a, I, heard a, I had a friend of mine that was a, a you know, a female woman. Uh, <laughs> We, we, went out to get, we went out to get dinner, and uh, as we were going out to get dinner, uh, a, we a weapon fell out of her, of her pocket. And it just kind of set me back, because I was thinking about the safety piece and how she felt going out on the streets on her own, and how I couldn't exactly relate to her experience as a man. So I was just in the studio one day, and it just came to be. And uh, yeah, I put it together in a song and just, you know, reflecting on my own personal um, story in regards to safety in a public space and, and the privilege that it takes to walk in the skin that we do. So the song is called Flowers. Um, I got a good friend of mine, Nick, he's gonna play guitar with me. And yeah, hope you enjoy it. She was ready rock, so I hit the booth and left it steaming like I'm Betty Crap. Steady tipping, plus we heavy dripping like a netty pot. Late night text from my ex, and in the Betty Wap. Bet she hot, will I do it? Better not, that's better not. This king already got a Coretta Scott. She know I'm on my journey, so I let it rock. 
20 minutes left with this therapist Telling her the truth and I'm just hoping that she's hearing it I changed the game cause this game is not at all fair Brought my dogs out from the rain cause ain't no one can Why they wait to give you your flowers when you cannot smell And why they wait to lift you up when they're your pallbearers If time is money I need me a richer Millie Doing this inner work to ensure my demons are feel me this 90 minutes with my therapist up The misadventures of a sensitive thug I'm leaving notes just like my memory sucks A Hail Mary and a stanza erupts Soon as I touch down and the ends will be up And that's on me, boy Through it all, I can't explain if it's so pain It feels so cold I don't know what I would do Second verse is for the women I cherish and love. Take my time, cause you inherit the stress. First date I remember, I picked you up in my car. I gave you a hug. I could tell you were nervous as fuck. So was I, but I held it and stuck to it because that's how a young boy learned to get through the mud. We hopped out of my whip. A knife fell out your purse. You said, ain't too many places a girl is safe on this earth. I said, I understood, but I didn't. God damn, the privilege of the skin that I live in. God damn, I walk at night, don't think twice about the feeling at all. Think we can make this world a better place for all of our children? Not just another blue check with an opinion. I vow to make a killing in the land of the living. What if 20 years later our kids grow in the system and not have to repeat history? Right. I can't it feels I can't complain, it feels so good. I don't know what I would do. Allison, Allison Russell. I've been a fan of yours since like going back to the 2000s and groups that you've been a part of, like Poe Girl, and, and uh, I just, it's amazing to see your ride with this first solo record of yours, Outside Child, from Grammy nominations to playing at the Grand Ole Opry. You're having a moment, and <laughs> it's beautiful to see. I hope it's more than a moment. I think there's a movement happening. I don't mean for me, I just mean in kind of roots music of acknowledging and uplifting the efforts of a lot of artists of color and black women, queer black women, and it's exciting time, I think, because we're being heard. We've always been singing and writing, but now we're being heard. Amen to that. Amen. What's the first song that you're gonna play for us? So the, this song is kind of a a precursor in a way to the Outside Child record for, for those of you who have never heard it. Um, it's an autobiographical work and it deals with my, somewhat with my childhood trauma. My history is um, a survivor of 10 years of really severe physical, sexual, and psychological abuse. But it's, the record isn't about abuse or trauma, it's really about the journey out of that. And for me that, that came, that liberation, that path to freedom came through music and art in the community I met there by, um, and the chosen family I found. And my mom is still um, trapped in a really violent domestic situation, and it breaks my heart, and I don't have um, the comfort of religious conviction. I'm a hopeful agnostic, but I think the only way I know how to pray is through songs, and so this song is a prayer for my mom because she deserves so much more, and I love her very much. Um, so this is, this is for her. It's called Kathy. Thank you. 
Why'd you put down your French horn? Don't you play piano anymore? I used to crowd down underneath the pedals moving with your feet and well, your hands carried you away. I remember, do you remember? Kathy, where the music goes? Don't you sing out anymore Those little operas For humdrum chores It's time to get up Time to get up in the morning Sweet melody For everyday things I remember Do you remember How you used to sing Records you loved so, dancing slow to Stevie Wonder. But Joni was your favorite one. Yes, yeah, she's from Saskatchewan, just like you, just like you. you let him steal your fingers it's time to get up time to get up in the morning Absolutely gorgeous. I kind of can't believe we're here and this is what's happening on the stage. I'm just gonna say it. It's like, what's going on? <laughs> this, is really, this is really incredible. And we still have another round with these brilliant artists. So let's keep going. We've got another song from Devin and Connor from Half Moon Run. Uh, I know you guys are gonna play us the, the title song from your 2015 album, Sun Leads Me On. Why did you wanna play this one for us today? I think it works well in this format. Yeah. Uh, a lot of other our, our songs are more instrumentated and they, they require a little more production and such, but uh, this works well in a folk format. Um, 
This one's funny. A lot of my, a lot of our songs, rather, are kind of misinterpreted in a, in a funny way. And I like the way that there's two meanings. There's my meaning, and then there's the, the other people's meaning. But so, well, the sun leads me on, and, and people think like, oh yeah, like the sun is lighting my path and going forward. But what I actually meant was, like when someone is flirting with you, in, you know, not seriously, and they're leading you on, and I meant like the sun is leading me on, like, a, you know, it's lying to me and it's it's pulling me forward, and that was like a metaphor for for our career uh, in in 2013, <laughs> which was which was going really well on paper, but uh, very challenging emotionally. So there was always this sun at the end. Oh, come on, look, the path is really bright. Why don't you come on down? It's nice and warm. <laughs> I'm glad so we had you here hell. to clear it up. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyway, let's do it.
Beautiful. From Half Moon Run, Devin Portilla and Connor Melander. You got those good, crunchy Half Moon Run chords <laughs> <laughs> on the guitar. That's like such a signature of your band. That's good. Oh, nice. thanks. Crunchy yeah. Half Moon Run chords. Crunchy. That's a new one. <laughs> Yeah, but they are, right? <laughs> yeah, that's the one. That's yeah. the one right there. Crunchy. Yeah, suspended, yeah. <laughs> that's so good. All right, on to on to Serena for your next for your next song. Tell me what song are you going to play for us and where does this fit into what you spoke about earlier with with this album and your your journey of wellness? Yeah, so this song is about um, kind of how I've learned to or I'm learning to take care of myself and really what um, that means. That's like it's taken me a while, and I think I'm getting better and better at it, um, a lot better at it, actually, recently. One of the big parts of it for me has been, you know, figuring out what, I, what, I, what mental wellness means to me. Um, and for me, like I said earlier, it's, it really is about trusting myself, like really having trust in myself. And one of the, the big things that um, has helped me do that um, not to say that I'm going to not do it for the rest of my life, but it's been three and a half years since I had a drink of alcohol. Um, and I used to drink a whole lot. And um, thank you very much. And life has, has just been sweeter and sweeter. Um, since I've not been drinking, I, I keep on joking with my friends that like when I'm 50 or 60, I'm going to have a winery and that's when I'm going to start drinking again, but um, who knows? Because that's like... it. Wineries are a lot of work. Maybe I'll just start drinking wine then. I don't know. But, um, but it's just, it's really changed my life and it's really helped me trust myself because um, that's the most important thing, I feel like, having trust in yourself. And that's, that's what I wrote this song about. <laughs> Let's hear it. Okay.
That's Serena Ryder. <laughs> in, in thinking about what we've heard so far and what's to come, I sort of want to throw out this, this question to all of you because, you know, when you get, get a bunch of songwriters together, you're bound to hear at least one or two songs about romantic heartbreak. And there is very little of that in tonight's <laughs> playlist. I'm serious. We're hearing about wellness about safety, about overcoming trauma, about um, being led on by the shiny things and looking for something deeper. Like, I don't know, I'm just kind of struck and I wonder if any of you have any thoughts on what we're hearing tonight and maybe what's happening in, in songwriting in general right now. Anybody want to chime in? Toby, you got any thoughts? I mean... I'm putting you on the spot. Maybe we just not really having good dating lives, you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. I don't know. <laughs> We need help. <laughs> yeah, I mean, totally. That I, I agree with Toby. Like, that's, that's where I'm at right now. But I also think it's like, I think it's also like, you know, we've, we've been kind of literally locked in for a while, and I feel like we're really taking the time to, like, get to know ourselves. You know, if we were forced to do it, but then it, it's, it's just such a beautiful thing to to have to do, you know, to look at yourself and, I mean, fuck, dating would be nice, though. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> you heard it here at the 2022 <laughs> Geo Songwriter Circle. Okay, okay. Some of us, been, some of us have been uh, in a partnership for, like, 15 years. <laughs> and I guess we've stopped writing about each other. <laughs> Oh, no, we're singing about other things, though, and I, I like it. I just think it's, I think it's just really powerful. Uh, okay, we're going to move on to you, Toby, and, and the next song you've got for us. Uh, tell us a little bit about this one. Okay. Um, this song is called City Blues, and uh, I'm going to... I have my man, uh, Nick. He's also going to play <laughs> on this song again. He's going to play piano. Very talented guy, very talented. Um, yeah, so this song, this song came about when I was just thinking about myself as a young man and, and kind of an idealist, you know, an, an idealist having this um, vision for the world and, and my surroundings and just not being satisfied with what I saw and just being an introverted kid who's very self-aware and very aware of the world around me. Um, and this song was born out of that, and I just hope it speaks to other youth around the world and people who still retain that sense of idealism as well. So, you ready, Nick? All right. Singing knees. Manchester City Blues Drown my living a pool of liquor's true uh. Monetize my pain And my hurt Come out to find my frame Do your work I might define my name Just the first to fit in this little game Look it's hard chilling with niggas who only talk about pictures and never about business. Misogynistic to their sisters get involved. Then it's vengeance in the name of feminism, of course. Bragging about who they pipe down with high school fool. What about right now? Ooh, you wanna fight clown? Want me to put the mic down and leave me Mike Brown? Light brown, soaked in the concrete, just beyond God's reach. So tell me what's next Boys in blue paint the town red From all the bloodshed Still interrogating myself Tell me how do crocodile tears Fall from dry wells You can't confuse fedora boy for a suspect The pen was the murder weapon The muse, the weeping woman still Trying to paint Picasso circa 1937 It's true I'm just paying my dues and my dudes You out pre in my moves I'm focused on my own too And keep singing these Manchester City Blues Drown my Live in a pool of liquor's true. Hi. 
monetize my pain and my hurt come I define my frame do you work I might define my name just the first to fit in this little game sing it oh you love it Mama working like there was two of them. Can't let this motherfucking nine to five, ten to eight ruin them. Meanwhile, I'm jumping through the hoops and dodging daily news and being in groups with young dudes are moving tough. Now she's stressing and thinking a baby doing drugs. A little weed, but I might as well have been shooting up. I aim for goals so high, they got me shooting up. But chasing dreams ain't for kids who got no time for looking up to the stars with leaks all in the ceiling plugs. I was chilling, just trying to make me a killing, bruh. I remember young Tony Tales from the hood. I remember teachers never had my name understood, but look. And with the back and forth like racquetball or basketball now You doing a bash, you put you on blast like a Kalashnikov I, All night is for med school, trying to crash the course I, Same and then I med it up with no the Adderall I, Think of the past and look at the battle scars Thinking to pick up the bags and taking a trip to California Yeah, 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 that's why I look in the mirror like I'm the fucking man Cause the younger me would probably be a fucking fan Look who the boy became and and I'ma hit the dam, MJ, Michael Jackson, Thriller Dance, Millie rocking either hand, Diddy bopping, sweeter man, trending topic, neither, I don't give a damn, I just wanna see the fam, winning off my man, just the city blues, drown my living a pool of liquor's true. Uh. Monetize my pain. In my heart, come I define my frame? Do your work, I might define my name. Just the first to fit in this little game. Sing it. Oh, you love it. Oh, whoa, whoa. Whoa. Brilliant. Totally brilliant. <laughs> Toby, do you mind if I ask you to say one of the lines from that one more time? It flew by and I want to hear it again and ask you about it if that's okay. There was a line in there about the younger you. Mm -hmm. Do you mind saying that again for us? And just yeah, for sure. Here? I said, uh, now when I, I look in the mirror like I'm the fucking man, because the younger me will probably be a fucking fan. What would you, <laughs> yeah, I know, right? What would you, what would you say to the younger you from this vantage point now, having written a lyric like that? I mean, so when I wrote that line, I think that's like a universal feeling. I feel like everybody, when they look in the, in the mirror, that, that is who, that is who they want to um, make proud. They want to make their, their inner child the most proud of themselves. So, you know, I think there's days where I feel like I'm not making myself my inner child as proud as he could be, you know? And then there's days where I'm like, oh yeah, you did that. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I think today's one of those days, so yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> you can swear, and I don't think that I can, so I'm just gonna, gonna say I'm an effing fan. <laughs> like all of us here. Thank you so much, Toby. Oh, Oh boy, okay, we've got one more song from, from Alice and Russell here. The, the first song that you played for us was named for your mom, and I understand that this one is also named for, for a relative of yours, so would you tell us a bit about it? An ancestor, yes, I've been, you know what you spoke about, Talia, as we began this session, just we've, we've and, and what we've all been saying, and what Serena has been talking about, we've all been really forced to face ourselves, and we've also been moving through a tremendous amount of tragedy and uncertainty and loss. And one of the things that gives me strength is to remember that every single one of us, no matter what 
our family background, our circumstances, our income level, our orientation, our identities, whatever it is, we all come from long lines of survivors, and that's why we're here. And every single one of our ancestors lived through times harder than these. I was really um, fortunate to meet my biological father uh, a few years ago, and he's a beautiful man, and I got to meet my black family. I was raised by white supremacists, unfortunately, but I got to meet my black family when I was a grown-up. And um, I learned about our family's journey from West Africa to Grenada, and then eventually Canada. But I would not be here were it not for the strength of my ancestor, the great matriarch, that as far back as we can trace, her name was Kashiba, and we believe she was born free and kidnapped somewhere in West Africa, sold off the coast of Ghana, survived the Middle Passage, survived multiple enslavers, survived her babies being taken, she survived. And that's why I get to be here, and that's why my daughter gets to have the kind of strength and tenacity that she has. So I'm grateful, and I wept when I learned her name, which is Kashiba. Your strength, we have life. 
Russell. Incredible. <laughs> Truly incredible. Okay, lucky us, we have time for one more song from Devin and Connor of Half Moon Run before we switch. Are you guys okay with that? Yeah? Yeah, they're like, <laughs> emergency tune. Yeah, do you guys mind? Would you do one more for us? Sweet. Okay, great. Email contingency song. Yeah. Contingency song. Yeah. The hotel. Really it's together. called contingency song. <laughs> yeah. No, it's not. It's this is a song with the most relatable title in the whole world. What's it called? I can't figure out what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't wait to hear it. I, I was hoping you would say it because it's so funny for a you know radio host to say that. You want to try it again? <laughs> We're gonna hear Half Moon Run play a contingency song because I can't figure out what's going on. <laughs> I heard it pays in space to be on your back again. To poison all your friends. And if you do it today, you could have gone beyond your means. Get over with the dream.
Beautiful. And on that note, we conclude our first round. I'm devastated to say goodbye to this round of songwriters, but we have another incredible round coming up for you. So please let us all give it up. This has been so inspiring for Devin Cotillia and Connor Willander from Half Moon Run. Bravo for Serena Ryder, Toby, <laughs> and Allison Russell. If you're listening at home, they're standing right now. You can do the same. I'm gonna stand too for you guys. That was absolutely stunning. Bravo, bravo. Thank you all so much. <laughs> Thank you all. Yeah, you can keep it going for them. <laughs> I know. Bravo, everybody. Hey, if you, are, if you are listening at home, there's lots more coming up, so don't go anywhere. Obviously, everyone here is not going to go anywhere. I'm really sad to see them go. <laughs> I would sit here all night. We could go round. We could go whole records, round for round for round. Um, but there's lots more coming up, a whole nother set. If you are listening or watching from home right now, please don't even think about changing the channel until after Sunday night. Um, also, I'm gonna tell you, I know we're like doing a little seventh inning stretch, but this changeover is gonna be really fast. It's gonna be like, like four minutes maybe and the next round of songwriters will be out here. So keep that in mind as you, as you shuffle around in here. We'll do some business on stage uh, on Sunday. Again, the 2022 Juno Awards are happening at 8 p.m. on CBC TV and CBC Gem, CBC Music, CBC Radio 1, and online at cbcmusic.ca slash Junos. All that to say, there are a lot of CBC places where you can catch the Juno Awards. Uh, and all the artists that you're hearing from tonight are nominated, so you're gonna wanna check them out for sure. Uh, my name is Talia Schlanger. I am here for Tom Power. Normally, he'd be hosting this event, but he's at home resting up tonight and uh, we're wishing him well. So I'm your host here for this 2022 Juno Songwriters Circle presented by SoCan and Factor in association with Music Publishers Canada. This is the part of the show where I talk for a little bit while they do this beautiful new stage setup here so we can get ready for our next round of artists. Um, and while we're here, I just wanna say this evening's concert was made possible in part with help from the government of Canada and Canada's private radio broadcasters. Uh, so over the past couple, hi. <laughs> over the past couple years, I think a lot of us have relied on artists and songwriters and music to help us get through, like maybe more than ever. We need songwriters to reflect our times and give us comfort, um, make us feel less alone. So we wanna acknowledge some of the people who make it possible for our artists to do exactly what it is that they do uh, and share it with the rest of us. So we're gonna send out a big heartfelt thanks to the Songwriter Association of Canada for advocating on behalf of music creators to protect the value of their work. I also wanna shout out a really vital organization that's helping future generations of tremendous Canadian songwriters and that is Music counts. So every single one of you who bought a ticket tonight, one dollar from your ticket will go to support Music Counts. That is Canada's music education charity. They do really incredible things in terms of getting musical instruments, equipment, and resources to schools that are in need. And they also help make sure that music education remains inclusive, sustainable, and accessible for young people across this country. Um, and it's their 25th anniversary. It's Music Count's 25th anniversary. You can feel free to give them a round of applause. They've been doing incredible things. Over that time, get this, they have invested over $16 million in schools and communities across the country, which is really something. Uh, and they have so much more to do. They can only help one in every five schools that reach out for support. Uh, and you can help close that gap by bidding on some amazing online auctions. If you happen to be watching online right now, maybe you wanna take a gander. It's www.musiccounts.ca slash auction. You can place your bids before the auction closes uh, on May the 16th. Okay, just checking in as we get set up for our next round of songwriters. We got a little, another minute to go, so I'm gonna take a sip of water. Whoop, it's gone. Okay, well, <laughs> it's gone. 
<laughs> That's funny. All right, by the way, all the, all the musicians that you're hearing tonight are Juno nominees, so you, of course, don't want to miss the big show. The 2022 Juno Awards are this Sunday at 8 p.m. They are hosted by Simu Liu, who is officially a Marvel superhero. Uh, and there are so many ways that you can watch the awards, so you can go to cbcmusic.ca slash Junos to find all the information you need there. Okay. can take a pause. All right, everybody, our stage changeover is complete. So if you want to make your way back to your seats for round two of our 2022 Juno Awards Songwriter Circle, that would be great. We can welcome our next round of artists in just a moment. Yeah? Are you ready? Are you ready? How's everybody doing out there? How are you feeling? Yeah? I think that's pretty good. Are we enjoying, are we enjoying the new and absolutely gorgeous Massey Hall? Yeah? Sounding good out there, looking good. Excellent, all right, we're all making our way back to our seats. I'm very excited about this next batch of artists to introduce to you. Are we, yeah? Okay, everyone. Yep, okay. Here we go, our second set of songwriters. I am very excited to announce at our 2022 Juno Songwriters Circle. Get ready to make some noise as we welcome them. First up, he is a singer, songwriter, and poet, and on Sunday he will be performing on the Budweiser stage at the Juno Awards. It's Mustafa. <laughs> Welcome. Come on in, all right. And from the three times Juno Award winning band, Metric, it's Emily Haynes and Jimmy Shaw. Welcome, you guys. All right, and nominated for Adult Alternative Album of the Year. Make some noise for the weather station. <laughs> Hi. And finally, her song, Take Care of You, is up for a Juno as well. We've got Charlotte Day Wilson. Welcome, everybody. Did you get a chance to hear backstage the first round? Yeah, that was something else, huh? That was beautiful. Beautiful, okay. Mustafa, we're gonna start with you. I know you were just on this stage recently when Massey Hall was first reopening. You were surrounded by trees. Uh, what's it feel like to be back up here again? Uh, I mean, it's such a beautiful venue. Um, I'm glad to be back here with less weight on my shoulders, you know? <laughs> sharing the stage with all these wonderful artists. 
yeah, I'm really excited to be here, you know? Good, we're glad you're here. Uh, what, have you, what do you have lined up for us first? Um, I'm gonna perform the last song on my debut record, uh, Come Back To Me, at least in my dreams. Mm -hmm. Let's hear it, this is Mustafa. I didn't know I was going up first, so. Oh. That's Mustafa. There's so much emotion in a song like that, and I'm wondering if there's a, there's a space of time that has to happen between the emotion that something like that comes from and actually sitting down to write words that reflect it. Yeah, I guess, uh, I mean, my record is on death. It's on the death of my friends in Regent Park. And I guess when I was writing that song, I was thinking about the grieving hierarchy and how many of us are allowed to grieve, the time restraints on mourning and on grieving. And I was self-conscious about some of my friends not returning to me in my dreams. And so I guess I was just contemplating existence, you know, in the community, how outside of the community, my experience felt so alien but in the community, um, I felt like I was of something that was normalized for better or for worse, which is why, you know, I share in the song, like, I miss not knowing I was poor, you know? I, mean, I miss when the night was made for rest, like, uh, all of these ideas that may seem unconventional outside of the walls of my community, but within them, they were everything to me, and it's the way that I survived. So, yeah, like, I was just trying to eradicate all of, uh, all of, uh, those notions that the way in which I'm supposed to lose someone is supposed to happen in a particular way. You know, and I, was, I wanted to reclaim that and, uh, and, and come to grips with the fact that, you know, the, each relationship I have with the dead will dictate 
the way in which they return and I just have to allow them to come back in the way that they choose to. Stunning. Mustafa, everybody. Thank you for that. All right, up next we're gonna hear from Emily and Jimmy from Metric. Hi. So people who are familiar with your band know you for like rock and arrangements and big songs. Um, but I'm wondering if what you're about to do for us now is sort of closer to the way that you write songs in the first place. Um, actually, it's a strange process for us where some songs do originate uh, very raw um, from the piano or just one instrument, but oftentimes, and the songs we chose for tonight are ones where there are these like huge arrangements, and then the song has this weird versatility where it almost wants to have another identity, um, and it's part of our process working together for 20 years um, is really exploring how these songs can like they can have an identity, but it's almost like a wardrobe of like the way that it's produced, or the way that it sounds, and the energy to fill a big room. But at its heart, the song is maybe completely suited to a more intimate telling. So, like the song I think we're gonna do is like, is it Cascades? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, Cascades is this like really dancey, um, it's like the danciest number in our set usually. But we started playing it at some point and it took on this life um, that inspired a bunch of other songs in this sort of dirt road style. Um, so, it's kind of, it, it goes like this. <laughs> Doing your job for you. <laughs> Please, that's great. I'd rather you do it, Emily. You're far better at it. It goes like this. It goes Here like go. this. Just keep going strong with whatever it is. That's compelling you on Yeah, don't be afraid When I'm gone Keep whatever it is Yeah, that's compelling you on Yeah Cascading waves of Emily Haynes and Jimmy Shaw of Metric. 
It's such a treat to get to hear that different take on that song. And I love hearing your voice like that, Emily. It's really gorgeous. Also, I mean, when you write a song like that, you've got just keep going strong with whatever it is. Um, sometimes it's probably hard to believe that <laughs> when, you, when you sing it. But what's, uh, just can you speak a little bit, I guess, to canonizing a sentiment like that in a song by making it a lyric? Well, I think the key part to that is um, with whatever it is that's compelling you on because it's like what, what motivates you, right? Like, and I'm sure everyone else up here knows what I'm talking about where like in your travels through life, you find people who share the reasons for why they do what they do. And the music might not sound the same or their line of work might be different from you, but if they have the same sort of like positive purpose, I feel like there's, you find that connection. So it's kind of the idea of, of that. That's beautifully said. Thank you so much. Metric. <laughs> All right, up next, Tamara Lindemann, who we know as the weather station. Hello. Yeah, woohoo, on stage, yeah, from all of us. <laughs> A big woohoo. Uh, what song are you gonna play for us first? I believe I'm playing Tried to Tell You. Yeah, Tried to Tell You, which, I mean, even in the title there, we hear a, a warning, a foreboding. Can, mm. can you <laughs> talk a little bit about it? Yeah, I mean, I was thinking of how intimidated I feel by this setup of talking about the song and playing the song in front of many people I admire. Um, I think a lot of my songs, the way in I always find is in through something very small. It's a very small moment. And then I feel satisfied with a song when I can both tell the very small story, but I also feel that it connects to a very big story. So in the case of this song, it was just a simple song where I was thinking of a friend and how I wanted them to feel their feelings and to ex express a love that I knew they had. And I, I wanted to sort of celebrate the unspoken and the sort of mystical that you can't quantify. And then this sort of little gentle love song, I feel like was that song, but also I feel like became a song about how I felt about the world as I moved through it. And, uh, just wanting everyone and everything to make space for the, the unnameable and unquantifiable. Yeah, it's the, um, I'm paraphrasing, but it's that James Joyce idea, like in the, in the particular, there lies the universal. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, and there's something so um, powerful about your songwriting in particular because of it. You let us think about these small details that might not be our details, but in a way they're sort of everyone's details. Yeah, I mean, I think that's, the, that's what I'm trying to do as much as I can, yeah, yeah. Well, before we hear you play the song, I'll say job done. Oh, thank you. <laughs> no. thank you. Yeah, uh, let's, let's hear it, this is the okay. weather station. I have to walk over to the piano now. Please, take that's your time, good. walk over to the piano. We'll applaud you over to the piano. This gorgeous piano. I think I'm in the way of some people seeing you, so I'm gonna move. It was getting late You were afraid of yourself Afraid that you might call her But you could not help yourself So why could I say Try to deny it 
station <laughs> creeping up behind you there after such a gorgeous song oh my wasn't that beautiful that was beautiful <laughs> thank you so much it was truly gorgeous oh boy all right up next we've got charlotte day wilson who's sitting right next to you hi charlotte hello hi so i think you're gonna play us uh, one of one of your earlier hits first right yeah i'm gonna play um uh, one of the first songs that I put out called Work. Um, I've never actually played it on guitar, so it's going to be a new experience for me. Cool. And you. What, did you write it on? what did you write it on? And can you take me I back? I wrote it on like a little Casio keyboard. Wow. Um, and so, yeah, it's kind of a nice challenge to give it life on a new instrument after all these years. Yeah. Before we hear it, do you mind telling me a little bit about where you were at in your, in your life where you would have written it? Because I think things have changed quite a bit for you since then. Yeah. Um, it was kind of like a, you know, it's kind of hard sometimes to go back and retrospectively picture and understand where I was at, but I think, thinking about it now, I think I was just, um, I really wanted to make it in the music industry. Like, I was, I didn't know how, but I was like, I wanted to um, find a place for myself in it, and this song was just kind of about self-motivating and feeling like, if I worked as hard as I could, then I could achieve my dreams. So I'll give it a whirl. Oh, mm -hmm. 
a turn But with you by my side I'm on the go Till I've got what's mine Cause people come and go the guitar that's spectacular thanks for braving it with me honestly Thank oh you. my god wasn't that amazing like you have a song like that and then it's so astounding to hear it like this um in light of what you said earlier about writing it sort of at the beginning of your career um you said it's gonna take a bit of work <laughs> would you revise the, would you revise oh, that yeah. at all mm -hmm. given what you've mm -hmm. been through now mm -hmm. like how much work a lot more yeah. than a little yeah <laughs> Yeah, well, we're, we're glad that you braved it. That was really gorgeous. Charlotte Day Wilson. <laughs> We've got Mustafa next, but he's like blown away by Charlotte like we all are, so. I know, right? I can't go after that. What am I going to do? What are you saying? <laughs> I think you can. That's the thing about this. It's like every single, every single one of you is so inspiring. It's just really something. Yeah. <laughs> so, Mustafa, the next song that you're going to play for us is What About Heaven? Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Uh, so I, like maybe a lot of people here, saw you make your TV debut performing the song on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. Yeah. And I really wanted to ask you after that, you had this beautiful video behind you mm -hmm. of all these like young people, I think it was mostly guys, yeah. it was in black and white, um, and it was so beautiful to look at. And since Jimmy Fallon didn't ask you afterwards, I would like to know, <laughs> like, was there a significant, who are, who are those people, or was there a significance to that? Yeah, um, all those people passed away, on the, all the young people that were in the, the videos behind me. I oh, think geez. when I, you know, like Canadian media did a pathetic job of preserving any of the memories of any of my friends and so I had to take it upon myself to do it and so you know just little videos of them. I think it was a reminder to myself and a reminder to my community first that the people that we loved they lived you know like just having Ali on a segue from an old Snapchat video or another friend just walking through the park. Like, we walked, we laughed, we enjoyed each other's company, and just, just the, our existence, I think, was stolen by that kind of distance between ourselves and the way in which their memories were being recounted. You know, dated mugshots, criminal records as descriptors. And I just wanted to take back just maybe a moment of their personalities for myself and repeat it and repeat it and repeat it until people see them as human again. Cool. <laughs> 
Would you, uh, yeah, that's wow. Um, would you say a little bit about uh, the idea of heaven in this, in, in this song? Because you're singing about it, I think, in a different way than I've heard it sung about. Yeah, I think well, with What About Heaven, I questioned the importance of any of the conversations I decided to lead with the friends that I lost. We were young and of course, you know, all these existential conversations on passing, on what happens after death, it didn't come up very often, but you know, the mundane did. And sometimes, a lot of times, you know, what you're swallowed by is the regret of not speaking of a love or of a heaven or of a transition that you knew was inevitable. And truthfully, in a community like mine, it feels critical to have those conversations because, you know, every day and every week and every month that we survive the state of this um, necropolitical environment feels revolutionary. And so those conversations are important. I started having friends like, you know, send me voice recordings of how they want to be buried and how they want to be remembered, which is so, such an important thing to do because like I dealt with the politics of burial. I dealt with the politics and the logistics of death more than I dealt with actually what the deaths meant to me at all. And so I think with What About Heaven, I thought about how much I discussed God because, you know, my friends are returning to God. And, uh, and the greatest question I think I ask here is, what if you're not forgiven? Because a lot of times when people pass, we, we want to like romanticize their memory, but I always question whether or not some of the people I lost were good people. And I think it's so important for me to be able to remember them fondly, but also to be able to critique them in the way that they lived sometimes, you know, and it's important that the community is able to do that. And we're able to do that amongst each other, not to say that any decision they made is, uh, is one that should result in their passing, but is to say that every life is an example. And the question of paradise and the question of forg forgiveness, those two are examples and the answers lie within the lives of people that I think passed too early. Heaven. 
Mustafa, and who's playing guitar with Simon, you? Simon, Simon wrote all the chords on the record. Wonder Woman from Stockholm, originally from Gothenburg, flew all the way from Sweden for this, so I really, really appreciate wow. it. Wow, thank you. It's too much, <laughs> it's like too good, it's too much. Oh man, okay, so one more from, from Emily and Jimmy from Metric. Uh, you guys have been collaborating for more than two decades. That's, and yet you're only in your 20s. I don't know how it's possible. It's but magic. It's, I don't it's, know. It's really something. But listen, that's, that's something to celebrate because it's intense what you do, creating together, touring together, dealing with all the ups and downs of all of this. So is there any, anything that you can point to that's made it such a success over such a long period of time or any, any advice for the rest of us navigating any sorts of partnerships that are well, successful you, you don't play after that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we're going to... Yeah, you'll last a lot longer not playing after you. So. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> No, really, anything, anything in particular? Like, I mean, it's, I, the, thing with, the thing with our band, particularly, uh, I mean, I, I, we've been around a lot of other artists, and we've been around a lot of, a lot of bands, and in, in other bands, and in all sorts of scenes and places, and um, the thing that seems like the most difficult thing to carry is, uh, like, a dedication to learning together, growing together, staying together, um, not letting silly things get in the way, not letting other people's lives get in the way. You know, you have to allow for multiple lives and uh, it's not always easy. And I think for us, there was a point kind of maybe, I don't know, late aughts, if that's even a thing, but uh, that we were like, we could have, we could have stopped, you know, it was, it was hard. And we toured a lot and none of us really had like feet on the ground and, uh, there was a lot of problems, and, and I think we just made a really conscious and aware decision with each other to just, to just do it properly, to like commit to each other. And as people, as musicians, as, as artists, as friends, as family, um, and it's been like, you know, now it just seems like that was ages ago and we don't even think about it anymore. It's just the life that we, the four of us have uh, just created with each other and every time we see each other it's just it's like moving back in with your like roommates that you always loved living with and you never really had to like do all the bad stuff in life and I don't know it's just it's it's a uh, I think if we hadn't made that decision to do it we wouldn't have made it and uh, I'm really grateful that we did. 
Yeah, so are all your fans, like me and like all of us, right? Yeah. Uh, the next song you're gonna play is Dark Saturday. I feel like the sort of ambiguity and the mystery is sort of the it of this song, so I don't wanna ask you to explain away too much of that, so say whatever you'd like before you play it. <laughs> Well, the previous song that we played for you guys was called Cascades, and that was from Pagans in Vegas, which, you know, is what happens when you let Jimmy produce your records, is he just mutes all the guitars. There were just no guitars. <laughs> and a lot of Metric fans were like, can you bring the guitars back <laughs> anytime? So for Art of Doubt, we were like, we wanted to really reassure people that Jimmy was definitely going to play the guitar. So we hired another producer to make me to actually make him, play the guitar. Exactly. It's a good technique. Well, it's it very is. hard it's to good. produce and also be like critical of your own work, incorporate it, all it of is. this. Like, it yeah. Is. yeah. Yeah. He just kept leaving himself out of the picture. So <laughs> it was kind of a little nod to um, our diehards that Jimmy was back. So we started the album with this super aggressive, um, epic rock <laughs> tone on this song, Dark Saturday. But once again, this is, um, we chose this song because it's one that proved very versatile. Um, and you know, it's a story about uh, economic inequality um, and people who like to kind of slum it in a reality that a lot of us had to work ourselves out of. So um, without ruining the mystique for you, Talia. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, should we play it? Yeah, let's do it. Somewhere in the south of France Or the Caribbean Sea She said, I don't need to make a living Fake diamonds got nothing on me I met her in the world below She's a tourist of the world beneath I said, everything I built from nothing she said, I'm so rich, everything's free, so dark, it ain't so dark, so dark, it ain't so dark. Forever and never, a torch in search of a flame to Such a dark, dark, dark Saturday What's your name and where are you from? Well, I'm with your waiting gold And while we lie here in the sun The whole wide world's about to explode Now our bodies intertwine and the truth is plain to see I said everything I built from nothing She said, don't you blame your problems on me So dark, it ain't so dark So dark, it ain't so dark Torch in search of a flame to be good, get better. I change by staying the same forever and never. A night in search of a day, as anxious as ever. It gets so dark, dark, dark. So shine a light my way, shine a light my way, I'm having such a dark, dark, dark Saturday, shine a light my way, it's such a dark, dark Dark, 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 dark Saturday, dark, dark. 
Metric like this, Jimmy Shaw, Emily Haynes, thank you so much. Okay, on to Tamara for another win from you, the weather station. Listen, you've put out two full length albums in the last two years. Yeah. That's a lot of writing. <laughs> are you const are you constantly are you constantly writing? No, not at all. I go through total droughts and then write a lot of songs in one time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, tell me about the, the next song that we're going to hear, uh, which I understand is a, partly, at least, about a bird. Yeah. Uh, once again, it's another song that's about a very small moment. Um, I, I always hate to tell the story, but this is that kind of Sorry. Night. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was, I, I, I was in Australia. I woke up jet-lagged, and I heard this bird song that just sounded so wild. It sounded so strange, and I never heard anything like it. And... I asked someone, you know, what is that bird? And they're like, oh, it's a magpie. Like, you see them around. They're, they're really common. And, and there was something about that sort of dismissal of, of this bird that I had encountered as being this very mystical being. And that name just bothered me. I was like, I don't, that doesn't sound right. And what's funny about the story is that the Australian magpie is actually named after the European magpie but it's not at all the same bird. It's a totally different species from a different family. Of course, indigenous people in Australia had much better names for this bird, but it's called a magpie. But then, you know, the way that I tend to think, I just thought way too much about it. And, and, and the song, you know, this, it's like the way I write songs is like I have this innocuous memory where I'm like, I woke up in Australia, I heard the bird, and someone told me it was called a magpie. And then I'm like, why do I want to write a song about this? But I think that... <laughs> You know, it, 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 like, it really matters to me, and I think, I guess to me, the, the big story of the song is, is the way that we always want to pin something down. We want to name things so we can keep them in a box. And I think it's so important to name things, but in doing so, we often take away all the mystery and, and make things far smaller than they are. Kind of like trying to get somebody to explain their song before we hear them play it. <laughs> no, I mean, in a way, that's a beautiful thing to get to do, yeah. actually. But yeah. It's yeah. both, it's yeah. the both things of it, it's as you said. Things, yeah. 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 Good. Well, let's hear it, if you yeah. would. I will do my walk to oh, the Please floor. applaud the walk of the weather station. I get out of your way.
never know what to say and not say to honor or betray in any given day but I never got used to the sound of the magpie it said my skin on edge it called like a child like a dog like the wind caught in a fence when we talked it interrupted and I would never know what it meant. Tamara Lindman, the weather station, so beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> that was gorgeous. I'm really sad to say this, but we only have one more song to hear tonight. Ooh, wouldn't you sit here like all night till the wee hours of the morning, proper songwriter circle style? Man, we're, we're spoiled. We have, we have one more song, and it's, uh, it's Charlotte, Charlotte Day Wilson. And I understand that you do a lot of your writing at the cottage. Would you tell me a little bit about why that space um, is so conducive to writing? Yeah, it's, um, it's been in my family for 60 years, so it's kind of a place that ties me back to my, my family and my childhood and my mom's childhood and everyone else's childhoods, and it's just a very kind of clean slate place, and there's also no service whatsoever, so I, as a social media addict, have like a little rehab moment there every once in a while. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's just like, it's a, it's a great place for me to write, and I, um, I start a lot of my music there. Um, so this song that I'm gonna play is one that I started there. Um, this one's called Take Care of You. Um, yeah. It's nominated for a Juno. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, is there anything else that you want to say about, uh, about Take Care of You before we hear it? Yeah, it's kind of like, I, I think before this album, this, is, this song is one of the singles from my album, Alpha, that came out last year, and it's, um, it's kind of one of the first songs where I feel like I was just going to be really explicitly lesbian. Um, I think before that, I had... <laughs> Shout out to the lesbians. <laughs> I think before that, I had, like, kind of tried to maybe just soften the language that I was using um, in, in order to not kind of out myself too heavily, but also not, like, alienate listeners at all. And I was like, I don't know why I'm doing that. I'm going to just write the song that I want to write about who I want to write it about, so, yeah. Wait for you come around like I've prayed for Wearing your cross on my chain for even the blind to believe. Oh, oh, oh but stay for I'll pluck the sea seven days for down on my knees as you came for times over me. Fly to the moon and back twice for 
Capstone and Dave Wilson live in Massey Hall next month. Tickets are going very quickly. Do not sleep on this event. Thanks, Mustafa. Of course. <laughs> Thanks for that. That's exactly what I was just going to say. Really? No, I'm kidding. I'm really glad that you did. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's so gorgeous with her Juno nominated song, uh, Take Care of You, Charlotte Day Wilson. Incredible. What if I said that we had time for one more song? Emily and Jimmy, would you do us the honor of playing one more for us? Hell yeah. Would you? Would that be okay with all of you if we hear one more from Metric? Yeah, I think so. Or you heading over to the... Oh, yeah. Okay, here, I'll, I'll handle that for you. You head over. I'm not get out of your way. Hecklers. Hey, you got one, you got one more song. Oh, yeah. What's it going to be? Water. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's hear it. The weather station blessed this microphone. I feel honored. All right. <laughs> I'm the blade.
love that. <laughs> That's so cool. Metric, Emily Haynes, and Jimmy Shaw. Thank you so much. That's it. So I want to thank all the artists up here tonight. Of course, Emily and Jimmy of Metric, Mustafa, oh my, Charlotte Day Wilson. Yeah, you can feel free to stand up. Tamara Lindman, the weather station. Bravo, and we also need to, uh, to acknowledge our first round of songwriters who were so, so tremendous. You heard from Serena Ryder, Toby, Half Moon Run, and Allison Russell. Whoa, thank you all so much. Our huge thanks to Massey Hall, SoCan Factor, Music Publishers Canada, the City of Toronto, Caras, the Juno Awards, Music Counts, CBC Music, and all the working crew tonight. Don't forget the 2022 Juno Awards are happening May 15th at the Budweiser Stage in Toronto. Everyone you heard from tonight is nominated. You can applaud them as they, as they head out. Uh, catch it at 8 p.m. on CBC TV and CBC Gem, CBC Music, CBC Radio One. Thank you. And online at cbcmusic.ca slash Junos. Thank you all so much for being here. It's been such an honor and an inspiration. Stay tender, stay safe. Good night. <laughs>